I mean, the reality is reading a book or going to a conference or having a great conversation where you get this golden information, that's all fantastic. But what makes mastery is execution on the ideas, not the ideas. And so no idea works unless you're willing to roll up your sleeves, do the practice, invest the time, put in the effort, do the work. I think we've all observed a lot of people who they love reading the books, they love showing up at the courses, they do all the online training and nothing ever changes. And they say, well, you know, I don't know why it doesn't change, why my life doesn't change, why my thinking doesn't change, why my performance doesn't change, why my relationships don't change. Well, it's because ideas don't work if you don't execute on them. So if you look at the great business builders, you look at any great performer, one thing that makes them great is their grit. One thing that makes them great is their hunger to practice. One thing that makes them great is they are willing to sacrifice. I mean, yes, they're passionate, but did you know the root of the word passion is suffering? You've got to be willing to suffer for your vision. You've got to be willing to suffer to reach BIW, best in world. You've got to be willing to suffer the ridicule and laughter of your critics and your cynics to get to a place called world class. I think failure is the highway to success, and I know that sounds like a platitude, but society or people teach us, right? Mm -hmm. They say, oh, if you fail and feel uncomfortable, you've done something wrong. Mm -hmm. And what I try to do in all of my books and my presentations and my tweets and is the you cannot get to the mountaintop without taking a few missteps. And so a business that wants to win, you have to outfail your competition. And as human beings, you know, failure is not a bad thing. You know, ask yourself, what's the opportunity from the failure and get in the game because when you get to the last hour of your last day, it will not be the failures you regret, it'll be all the risks you didn't hit. Small wins matter. I mean, we sometimes think that a, an epic life occurs one Sunday, sunny Friday afternoon when the stars line up and something revolutionary occurs. And what I'm suggesting to you with great love and great respect is a great life is built not by revolution. A great life is built by evolution. Small and steady wins the race. What you do every day is far more important than what you, what you do once every decade. I want you to really think about that idea. What you do every day is simply your life in miniature. And as you live every single day, so you're crafting your life. What you do over the next hours is really building your future. And if you can just get, and I can just get every single pocket of 24 hours right as best as we humanly can, the rest of our life is gonna take care of itself. So small wins matter. You know, the moment in front of the customer where the pull was to go average and you become a merchant of wow, sets you up for the next day of a way of being of wow. The little win with your family when you feel like watching TV sets you up for another win the next day. A little win of getting up at five o'clock and running your morning routine sets you up for a habit of a 5 a.m. club morning routine. Small daily improvements over time will lead you to stunning results. Tiny wins are the way to greatness. And that's one of the things life has taught me. When you look at the great companies, whether it's an Amazon, whether it's you know, some, of, some of the tech startups coming out right, right now, whether it's a Zappos, whether it's a FedEx, whether it's a Nike, whether it's a General Electric, whether it's some of the, you know, the, the, the little shops in your neighborhood that we really admire because People still cook the food with love or they serve the food with love or people have an attention to detail. Great companies are built by those small steady optimizations every single day. If you look at any great product, it wasn't just one day that built a great product. It was a culture and a mindset of daily innovation and optimization when done consistently over time which led to world class. Even, even relationships, a great relationship. It's all about those small daily wins when done consistently leads to a lifetime of love. I was walking in the woods last week and there were these, there was an elderly couple walking in front of me and they really stood out because they were moving fast. Uh, and, I, and they were also like, they had these ski poles. And so 
this, I mean, this is the autumn in my hometown, and they were walking with these ski poles, and so I sort of joked as I walked by them because it's pretty much only the three of us in this deep forest, and I said, you're missing the snow, and they sort of laughed, and we actually walked for about half an hour, and we started going pretty deep, and they said to me, you know, we've been married 52 years, and I said, 52 years, what's your secret? And the woman says, well, we've, I've had to put up with a lot, which made me laugh. And then it was all about the little, small, daily things they did to foster a lifetime of love. And if you're liking the video so far, hit the like button down below and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Next is aim for legendary. Nothing fails like success. You're successful, maybe it's in your health, maybe it's in your finances, maybe it's in your career, maybe it's in your family life, maybe it's in the way that you show up in the world. Awesome! You're in a really vulnerable place right now. It is one thing to be successful, it is another thing to sustain success over the coming decades. Is that not a powerful idea? I mean, let's go to the entertainment industry. It's very hard to be a one-hit wonder. Let's not knock a one-hit wonder. But it's even harder to become an iconic rock band or hip-hop band. Let's go to the arts. It is very hard to come up with your Sistine Chapel. Got it. It is even harder to become a Michelangelo. So are you playing the short game or are you playing the long game? This is rule you know, life has taught me. Play the long game. Aim for legendary. Don't just Say, I want to be world class in my dominant pursuit for a little window of time. Say, I want to have the guts and the grit and the acumen and the mindset and the capability and the commitment to create enduring success. And that's why I say nothing fails like success. You look at the restaurant that is hot in your neighborhood right now. They're on the path to obsolescence if they're not really careful. Sure, they went from a little neighborhood shop that made beautiful pasta, that had great service, that had the owner on the floor, shaking your hand, getting to know your name. Then they got written up in the magazines, and they, then they got interviewed, and then word of mouth spread like wildfire, and what happened? They became arrogant. You see, success can be so toxic, and it happens, it, it is such a pull on every human being. It just plays with your mind, and you literally shift from humility to arrogance. You shift from humility to arrogance, and once the arrogance sets in, in a mindset, it starts to populate every other person on the team, every other person in the culture, every other person in the community. And it is a very short fall from success to irrelevance. So lesson number two is nothing fails like success. As you become more successful, become more humble. As you become more successful, work even harder. As you become more successful, care even more about your product. As you become more successful, learn even more. I invite you, when you are the, the titan of your industry, be sitting in the room with 18 year olds beginning their game. When you are the, the, the icon of your field, be the person who is up, not at five o'clock anymore, let's play at four o'clock, reading, listening to the podcast, writing in your journals, setting your goals, focusing on your intentions. As you become more successful, be more humble. As you become more successful, be even more punctual. As you become more successful, become even more passionate. As you become older, become even younger. Yesterday I was walking on the street and I met this man in his 80s. He said, Robin, I finally retired. He's probably close to 90. And he is um, a legendary clothier in the country that I live in and he just retired. And he started his shop, which is now an empire, in 1954. So I don't know what that is, but that is decades and decades and decades and dec decades. And he did not want to retire, he just retired, but he is still on fire to do amazing things. Age is just a number. Do not let an old person into your body. Nothing fails like success which is the importance of scheduling. You know, I talk a lot, of, a lot about having a dream, having a plan, you know, being inspired, but all ideas don't work unless you do the work. And some of the best work you can do is getting really good at 
creating a one-page plan. Have your big five, the five things that need to happen this year for this to be your best year yet on a one-page plan. Your top five values, put them on that same plan. Your top five sub-goals sequenced into each quarter of this year on that one-page plan. And every morning while your competition or the rest of the world is asleep, get up at 5 a.m. I'll teach you how to do that in future videos. But look at your one-page plan. Spend 20 minutes on that so it becomes a brain tattoo, a burning obsession. So it alights you with inspiration. So you go out in the world and you understand that clarity is power and you so intimately know what has to happen during this day, this week, this month, this quarter, this year to get you closer to your mountaintop. Because the, ordinary, the, the hours that ordinary people waste, extraordinary people do. Because they're not bored like most people. Most people need to medicate themselves with too much TV, too much Facebook, too much video, too much chit chat, too much busyness because they don't know their goals because they don't have a one-page plan, because they don't have a one-page schedule. I mean, I've got my schedule for every seven days. Almost everything I need to do goes on it. And you might say, Robin, well, that's a very rigid way to live. No, it's a very free way to live because then I have the power to live life on my own terms. I feel inspired. I'm not wasting each day. I'm leveraging each day. And then the final idea is please remember this.